Hey guys, uh, so here I am back after taking a few weeks off after finishing the Porsche 956. Um, so anyways, as you might be able to figure out, uh, this is going to be my next build here, the uh, Nissan R89C. This is to me his kit, right there. Um... It, you know, fairly straightforward, you know, not a super high parts count to this, like most Tamiya race cars. Um, it's, it should be a fairly straightforward build. I did have to buy a bunch of replacement decals. The decals that are on the sheet are just moldy and some of them will be salvageable. Some of them won't. Um, I'm hoping... More will be salvageable than will not, but we'll see how that goes as I as I work on it. Um, I did already, you know, just kind of clip the body off of its off of the body sprues. Um, just to point out to anybody watching that, you know, if you're building one of these to me kits, to me it makes great stuff. But for the race cars, um. The fit isn't <clears throat> the fitment on the front body work to the rear body work when it's made to be removable, like this one is. Um, they don't always fit together very well, um, and that's just kind of something you have to live with unless you're willing to sit and you know do extra stuff with putty or you know possibly. I don't know, adding plastic to it to try and, and reshape these lines on this thing to make them fit a little bit closer. Um, if you look at this one on camera, it probably doesn't look too bad. You can see it, it, it doesn't fit very well at the corner. Um, it doesn't fit very well on this corner. And then on the other side, it's the same thing. There's a pretty, pretty good gap there. Um, it's not something I'm going to... You can see there's a big gap right here um, it's not something I'm gonna worry about it's not something I'm I'm terribly picky about um, it's just it's I can live with it because again this piece is made to be removed so that you can show the <clears throat> show the engine detail and the engine and suspension detail I'm sorry I'm stumbling on my words I'm a little bit tired today um, the other thing that I wanted to do quickly was to show off um, for anybody that doesn't do car building or, you know, race cars like I do, um, a, a good way of getting rid of the body mold lines. So you've got, I don't know how well this is going to show up on camera along the, the, to me, molds are really good about keeping these body mold lines fairly minimal. Um, and this one, there's just basically two. Um, yeah, there's really only two, and they run down the front section and then to the rear body work, but there's a line, there's a line that runs right along just, just to the top side of the curve here. So there's a line there on both sides, and I was just going to kind of quickly go over how I deal with getting rid of those. Um, and it's not a new technique. It's not something that I do and it's ah, oh, it's my super secret thing This is what a lot of people do uh, to get rid of seam lines on or mold lines on on a lot of things um, Pretty simple. You just take your your permanent marker Black for me. You could use red or blue if you wanted But I do black and I just kind of go over that that line Or you go off of it if you're me <laughs> Um but I just kind of color over that line not very well and then I'm going to take my sanding stick and I'm basically just gonna sand until that black goes away because if you if you cover this line with your black marker and then you uh, sand until that goes away you can see what I did there that's roughly where that line is. It's not, I mean, it's a straight line. It's not all janky like mine. Um, if I take my sanding stick and go over that now, 
And if I, all I do is I'm just going to sand until that black goes away and try to make it nice and smooth. I'll, I'll hit it with my sanding stick. And then I'll come back with some finer grit sandpaper just to smooth it up uh, and make it not look so rough. But uh, we're just, I'm just going to go and take this and get a good angle here. <laughs> I'm trying to do this for the camera and so that I know what so that I'm not screwing it up. But I'm just gonna go over that. Like I said, until that black goes away. Once the black goes away, your seam line is gone too. So Going right down the line there. And I'm actually going to go over this entire body work with just a really, really fine sandpaper and scuff it up just so that the primer sticks a little bit better too. But Sorry, off camera. Anyway, that's it there. Seam line's gone, pretty simple. Um, you know, if you, you don't have to take that off if you don't want, but you're gonna have a pretty unrealistic um, raised edge going down the bodywork that wouldn't be there on the actual car. Um, so it's 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 pretty quick and simple way of it's a it is a pretty quick and simple way of getting rid of the uh, the mold lines on the on the bodywork. Um, anyways, I just thought I'd show that off quick for anybody who hasn't done cars, who hasn't done race cars, that sort of a thing. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. I'm going to spend a few minutes here and do the other four, or the other three, uh, mold lines on the bodywork and that'll be... That'll be done. I just have to, uh, like I said, I just have to scuff it up a little bit more for uh, for primer. Anyways, I mean that's it. That's gonna be. This is gonna be my next project that I'm gonna work on. Um, hopefully the decals work with me <laughs> and not against me, and uh, the whole thing comes out uh, comes out nice. Like I said, I'm fully expecting this to, you know, or I guess I didn't say, but. When I mount the bodywork to the chassis, or the floor pan in this case, um, I'm fully expecting this bodywork to not sit. Uh, this this gap, the, the gaps here are going to be worse because it's just you're going to have engine engine bits in inside of here that are going to want to push this push the back uh, the rear bodywork around and make it not want to sit right. Um, so I'm fully expecting that to not not fit as well once it's on the actual floor pan for the car. Um, but it's you know just one of those things that you have to live with with these kits. As good as they are, they're not perfect. Um, and actually, if I pull this out again, if you look at the uh, if you look at the instructions, like the the their supplied version here, there's a giant gap in the bodywork. Um, you can see where it's not sitting correctly uh, on top of the on top of the car. So, like I said, it's it's just one of those things you have to uh, you have to live with. Um, but that should be uh, it. Should be a pretty straightforward kit. I think I've got to do a little bit of cleanup with the uh, windshield. I don't know. Probably can't see it. There's a scuff mark here. There's actually a few scuff marks here, and then there's another one, I think, over on this side here that I'm going to have to, again, go in with 
uh, really fine sandpaper, sand that out, and then cover it with uh, or dip it in uh, uh, br 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 future. Sorry, like I said, I'm tired today. Um, anyways, so that's got to get fixed. That's that's actually a pretty easy fix. This was run. This was just kind of floating around loose in the in the parts bag with the uh, with the body. So that's how that got scratched up but um other than that i'm not expecting any i'm not expecting this to be a difficult kit i don't know that maybe that's a bad thing maybe it's gonna come back and bite me in the ass and it's gonna be a, just a pain to work on i don't know we'll see as i as it goes along anyways i'm rambling at this point um i'll have some some progress uh videos as the uh build continues that's it. Thanks for watching, everybody. I uh, hope everyone is out there and enjoying the summer.